What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to be reviewing Gears of War 3. This is the third installment in the Gears series, and according to Epic, this is going to be the last. At first look, you have nothing but gorgeous, amazing visuals in this game. And as far as uh, this engine goes and this game goes, I am very impressed with the visuals, the scenery, the epic views. I think that Epic did a great game or a great, great uh, job of displaying uh, pretty much maxing out what the 360 is capable of. And that is what I've been playing this on to, actually for this review. Uh, it's, it's kind of a, a stark contrast to the brutal violence that this game has which is actually um, very satisfying at its core. The, you, there's a lot of guttural, disturbing destruction uh, supported by an excellent selection of sound effects. And coupled together, it, it actually makes a very, very, very immersive experience. Um, it's just you, that deep grinding pop when you knock somebody's head off and blood flies everywhere. It's just, it's again, very, very satisfying. So. There's a, in this iteration as well, there's an impressive enemy variety. New enemies that keep you on your toes. They force you to play as a team to defeat them. And uh, I mention this now that co-op is, is now four players. And it is definitely something that you have to do as a team if you're going to succeed. The engine will dynamically level the difficulty depending on how many people are in your game and when you have four people in and you're in a boss fight on one of the harder difficulties it's very challenging and you need to get your team together to uh, to play as, as one in order to win so I was pretty impressed with that uh, along those same lines there if you're not in the if you don't have people to play with um, co-op partners you have AI there inserted and and I gotta say I am really really impressed with the AI in this game they're not stupid they don't rev they revive you they they back you up and they generally play halfway intelligent and as far as AI and video games go I gotta say I'm pretty impressed also new to this iteration are several new weapons I'm only gonna mention a few uh, one is a sawed-off shotgun, which is a really close-range version of the old Nasher shotgun. Uh, this thing is pretty useless at any kind of range, but if you ride up on somebody, they explode instantly. Multiplayer, whatever. Everybody just explodes. They also have the uh, Retro Launcher, which is a less accurate version of the, the typical gun that you use in the game, which is the Lancer. And... Uh, but it, it is much stronger and it includes a knife on the front instead of a chainsaw that allows you to run at enemies and stab them. That's actually a pretty neat tool and I, I have been using it quite a bit and have kind of grown to like it. There's also the digger which um, I don't want to ruin anything for anybody but the digger is, is kind of a neat gun and you guys will definitely check that out when you get into the game. Also new to this game are silverbacks. Yeah I'm not talking about the gorillas I'm talking about the mech suits. So. These things are, I just, I can't believe they put mech suits in this game. It's amazing. I, I'm loving it. You get in these things and you can just stomp enemies out. You can shoot them. Some of them got, got uh, missiles if you go into a defense mode. But it's definitely, definitely something that's a lot of fun. So, um, now that I've uh, said a lot of nice, nice things about the, uh, the single player, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, say what I don't like about it. Um, couple issues that I had it's got pretty bad dialogue you know a lot of people may disagree with me on this but it is tons of, of cheesy one-liners and and for a game of this uh, this uh, I guess you could say genre and um, how much money's been pumped into this game it, it should have a better story than it does it's pretty subpar for for what it is uh, nonetheless I gotta say that Coltrane has somehow managed to grow on me. I couldn't stand that guy in the last game. He just drove me nuts. Um, but in this game, I'm actually appreciating him as a character. And I'm finding him pretty funny. Um, typical on-rails vehicle transport sequences are par for the gore course in Gear series. Um, they seem to drag out in Gear 3. I mean, they seem... To me, they just seemed to go on forever. They were slow-paced. They weren't as difficult as I thought they were going to be. And, and I was playing on the highest difficulty, by the way, for those of you who are going to complain. Um, they just seemed to drag on. 
And then, spoiler alert, if you haven't finished the game, go ahead and stop listening here for a second. When Ice-T came on as a voice actor, I wanted to punch through my screen. Why they brought him in the game and they wanted him to come in and sound like some ignorant asshole um, is beyond me. It just, it, it drug the game's overall value down and I don't understand why Epic would sink themselves to that level hoping that they would achieve some, some uh, more users or something. Despite this, I gotta say that this game is very, very, very polished. I know they changed the date originally, I think they pushed it back several months. Um, it was supposed to launch in early 2011, and it, and it, here it comes out in late 2011. Um, the game is polished. I gotta tell you, there's not a whole lot of clipping, there's not a whole lot of shenanigans. They absolutely refine the controls from the other one, and I gotta, I gotta say, I hate Gears controls with an absolute passion. I think that their controller scheme is trash. I don't understand why they would do it like they do it, but it, regardless, I think that they did a great job with the with the uh, the the tuning and the polishing of this whole thing because everything is is so easy to control and characters move where you tell them to go. There's none of this herky jerky that you got in the last two games. Um, I mean, there's a little bit, but it's it's not nearly as pronounced as it used to be. Um, it is also a very immersive experience with the visuals and the sound and, and just the overall beauty of the game. It, it sucks you in and it's very, very cool. So, what most of you are waiting for, onto the multiplayer. Okay, so the four player co-op for this game is amazing, right? I love every second of it. It's team focused, you gotta play together as I mentioned earlier to beat bosses. Your character is persistent throughout multiplayer, single player, blah 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 blah, you're going to have the exact same rankings levels. So you can rank up the same character in single player that you can rank up in multiplayer, which I think is just a fantastic idea. And then it also has the drop in drop out function, where your friends can just drop in your game and drop out whenever they want, it does not affect you. Horde mode, uh, I've always been a, horde a fan of horde mode in the past. Horde mode kicks ass in this game. Um, they've added a lot of new cool things to it. I'm really, really, really digging it. Um, they've got a lot of new uh, defensible positions. You can put up defenses and they actually work. You know, you can put a barbed wire and you'll get you'll get locust caught in it, which is totally cool. Um, and, and I like being able to build up this defensive barrier and just, just hold out against these guys. I think it's great. Um, but it's crap for experience. I don't know what they were thinking when they did this because, in you know, it, it's just I think they should have included a bit more experience in doing that. Um, there's also beast mode, which is a version of horde mode, but with the roles reversed. You and you are the locust attacking a group of gears, and you have to be really, really team oriented to win at this. It's definitely not your typical. Um, typical horde mode and so it's a whole new twist on it and it's very enjoyable and I, I definitely recommend it so on to the standard multiplayer uh, it's the same recipe that has worked for for uh, epic over the years um, and people are gonna love it it's a you know it's polished it's, it's much better um, than the last one there's six different game modes to choose from uh, I'm not gonna list them but you can definitely go check them out on your own and you know, I just want you guys to know that this is my opinion, which is subjective, and and this is what I think of Gears multiplayer. And to be honest with you, I can't stand the Gears multiplayer. I really don't care for the genre, and the controls are not conducive to a good multiplayer experience. I think jumping from cover to cover to blast someone with a shotgun is a fun for approximately five minutes. The multiplayer lacks depth, as it always has, and balance. Putting weapons in the middle of a map so that the first person to an overpowered weapon destroys everybody else on the game is definitely an overpowered situation, and it's, it's, it's not balanced. What the online multiplayer really is, it's pretty much reduced to a shotgun fest with people jumping around like a bunch of idiots. And for me, that experience isn't fun. So that's my take on the multiplayer, love it or hate it, it's my opinion. And that's what I think. So, my conclusion to this whole thing. Where, where do I stand? What, should you buy? Should you not buy? I gotta tell you, if you're a fan of the series, you probably already bought it. You should have bought it. 
Um, the Gears is definitely a, a, a different control theme from a typical third-person shooter. Um, so if you're not used to it, you're new to the genre, I would definitely rent it first and make sure that you can deal with the controls and then the way it moves, because uh, it's different. And um, for me personally, because I got friends that I play with online, I, I got to tell you that the co-op alone in this game was worth the full purchase price of the game. If this did not have multiplayer or horde mode or anything else on it uh, in the multiplayer, I would have bought this just for the single player um, with friends co-op. It was absolutely an amazing experience and I highly recommend it to everybody. So that's my review on Gears of War 3. Thanks everybody for watching this and make sure you subscribe for more reviews.